Hey yo, what's going on guys? This is Michael Reed here and welcome to the Thanksgiving Special 2023. So yes, uh, before I begin this video, of course, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Um, <laughs> by the time you see this, it will be Thanksgiving, right? Um, definitely let me know in the comments down below uh, what y'all are doing for Thanksgiving, what kind of stuff you're going to be cooking. Um, or maybe none of you celebrate Thanksgiving at all. And uh, in that case, let me know what you're doing instead um, in the comments down below. So, anyhow, so today I'm going to be doing a overall review of every single Lego model car I have in my model car collection. So that's going to include Lego Creator Expert, Lego Technic, uh, Adults Welcome, all that stuff. It's all going to be in one big video because I've talked about this briefly, I believe, in a couple of videos uh, that I've been wanting to do a like massive review of every single Lego model car that I, that I have. Um, currently, so today is going to be that day, so, um, and we'll try to include, uh, chapters here, so that way y'all could just skip to a certain vehicle, uh, in the collection that you want to look at, um, and, of course, you know, expect a lot of jump cuts in this video, because, oh my god, there's so many cars <laughs> that I'm gonna have to review, so, let's not waste any more time, and let's get right into the review, starting with the Mini Cooper. Yes, so this was first released in, I believe, 2014. So this is a very old car in my collection. And if I can actually reach the buttons, there we go. Uh, you guys can see just how, just how big this car is. Yes, it's still relatively small, but it's still a fairly large vehicle. So, um... Yeah, <laughs> so it's funny because I first got this Mini Cooper as an impulse buy. I just saw it at the store and I was like, you know what, you know, let me see if I can get this. And plus I believe it was on sale because I think it was originally like two, three hundred bucks at launch. Uh, but I, I believe I got it on sale for like, what was it? I think it was like closer to like, what was it, a hundred bucks or something? Like I got it for like a steal, you know, and... Ever since then, right, this is what started the entire collection. I was, this was originally going to be the only one that I had, but of course, like anything that I collect, it's never just one. It's I, I have to get almost all of them. So, yeah. Uh, and this one's really interesting because it's... As you're going to see throughout this video, this one kind of was the right, the first to really pioneer some of the features that future LEGO model cars, as you'll see... Um, have improved and evolved on. So, so when you get the front of the Mini Cooper, right? Uh, we pop the front open, and there is the detailed engine block, looking very, very nice. Now, yes, I do realize mine's a bit dusty and a bit cruddy. Uh, that's just because this thing uh, has right been sitting on a shelf for like, you know, ages. So I apologize for that. Um, just turning the turntable around just a bit. Uh, to the side now, uh, we can see the opening doors. Now, unlike other right cars, this door goes a bit too far. I think I should have stopped like maybe here, but now it goes all the way out to there. And it does have, if we turn it around, uh, it does have, ooh, okay, bumping into my backdrop, uh, which I am probably going to have to move that for the rest of the video, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, you can see the leather padding on the inside of the door which is very nice or what's supposed to be like a leather padding uh, and then of course you have the seats on the inside which are indeed foldable so you can fold them down or fold them back you can adjust the headrest all of that stuff now of course you do have what looks to be like the glove compartment or perhaps the pedals for you know the the brake you know reverse and forward um, pedals and then, of course, you have the, if I can actually zoom in on that, the internal console, which does have what looks to be a stereo setup. Uh, you do have the, the, you do have, like, the clutch in whatever case may be. So, because I believe this is a stick shift uh, type vehicle. So, that is pretty cool to see. 
And of course, we can also remove the top, so that way we can see even more of the inside. If I zoom it back out again, and close the other door. So you guys can see, now the stick shift can be pulled back and can be pushed in multiple different directions. It's supposed to go just forward and back, but it is on a ball joint, so that is pretty nice. Uh, then, of course, is, you have the right clutch here, which you can adjust. The steering wheel is, in fact, steerable. Although, of course, it's way too big for the car. Way too big. But I get what they were going for. And it does actually have patterns on the actual seats, which I think is pretty cool. Even though looking at it now, it's a bit garish, isn't it? But, <coughs> excuse me. So then, of course, we have the rear seats, which are very nicely padded on the inside. And we do have the Mini Cooper stickers as well, because this one has quite a number of stickers on it. And real rubber tires, which is pretty sweet. And yes, as a matter of fact, it is using an ice skate as a, um, what do you call it, a door handle. I think that's a really cool detail that I'm glad others in the, uh, others in the series use as well. So now to the back, you can see the tail lights, right? The little exhaust pipe there. Now, unfortunately, mine is slightly broken because there is supposed to be a piece right here on the corner. But for some reason, I haven't been able to find that piece. So I might have to buy, right? Because you could actually just buy individual Lego pieces. So I might have to order this exact piece here. So that way I can have it fully completed. But um, you can open up the rear part there, which for some reason is kind of broken. Just had to pop that back in place. And you do have a picnic blanket. And this is real cloth as well. Very nice. I was surprised at how good condition this is. Um, despite, of course, just being stuck in the trunk uh, all this time. But very nice patterning. And again, real cloth. So that is really cool. Then you got the picnic basket in here, which has a couple slices of cheese. You got a uh, baguette in there, and you got two drinking cups in there. Well, they look like wine cups, but still, you know, you get the idea. And last but certainly not least, you do have a water bottle right here. And I believe somewhere inside, yeah, there's also a spare tire, which I have no idea how you're meant to get that out. Oh, like this. You lift this up, and then you can grab the spare tire, which is very, very tightly packed in there. So, give me a minute. Let's I try to fiddle it out. Uh, come on. Okay. Yeah, this is not very easy to get out of there. But trust me, it is in there. I'm not going to bother trying to get it out, because I know it's going to be a pain to get it back in. But yes, it does have a spare tire um, that you can, that is usable. So that is super cool. Now to just put all the little accessories back inside. And of course, getting the little what you call it, picnic blanket in there. And there we go. So very nice trunk storage there. And then of course to pop the top back on. Now, it looks that the pieces up here have yellowed over the years, but I guess that's kind of the nature of these pieces. They just yellow over time, especially with all the sunlight that's been hitting them. But, yeah, so that's basically it for the Mini Cooper. Simple, but effective, you know? And uh, it's just a really, really cool set. Really, really do like it. Now, if I do remember correctly as well, I believe it did have optional front and rear bumper stickers, but... Honestly, I can't remember off the top of my head if it did or not. I know later ones for a fact did, but I don't think this one had any. But still, super, super cool vehicle. Really happy to have it. So now to jump cut to the next vehicle in the series. All right, so here is the next one in the series, or at least this is how I have them displayed, is the Fiat 500. Yeah, he's <laughs> another little small car, but... Again, little smally guy, but again, he's actually so big, he actually won't fit on my turntable properly. But, where are the buttons at? There we go. 
As you guys can see, it is a very nice yellow. Now, I did find out fairly recently that apparently there was a very rare blue version of this car, which literally changed pretty much nothing of the design outside of taking all the yellow bricks and replacing them with blue bricks. <laughs> And I think that's super cool, but unfortunately, yeah, on the aftermarket, it's next to impossible to get one. Uh, so, uh -huh. but then again, I really, it doesn't really matter. You know, blue schmoo, who needs it? Um, moving this out of the way now. <clears throat> so that way we can take a better look at the little Fiat here. So, of course, we're going to start at the front and work our way back. So on the front, of course, we do have the little Fiat logo there. Hard to see, but it is there. And we do have the little bumper sticker, which I believe this one did have optional bumper stickers on it. So that is super cool. Uh, opening up the front now, you can see the little port for where you would pump gas into the vehicle. And then, of course, we have the front tire. Uh, or spare tire, excuse me which, as I said, is in fact usable. And again, I'm surprised how good condition this is, um, at least on mine. Then we have that. Moving to the side, we do have the doors. Now, fortunately, this one does not have a removable hood, so you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. And of course, the seats are a bit cruddy. But as you can see, the seats are in fact foldable. Barely, but you can fold them. The back is completely static, so you can't adjust the headrest or anything. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then we have the front we uh, steering wheel, which of course has the Fiat logo on it. Uh, that is thankfully a printed piece. And of course you have the speedometer b behind it. Then you do have the steering clutch here for... Right, you have the clutch and, of course, the stick, because, once again, this is a stick shift um, operated vehicle, right? And then, of course, you do have the radio there, which is going to be very hard to see, but it does actually have the key already inside the car, and you do actually have the little radio set up in there. But, again, that's really going to be hard to see, but thankfully... It does actually, we do have at least some way of getting onto the inside from the top at least. And that is the retractable front or top little little screen here. So this is in fact a cloth top, which is very nice. And you can fold it either back or have it fold forward. So it is in fact, right, uh, somewhat convertible. E. <laughs> but barely. And now you can really see the little radio there with the key inside and the little knobs to change the channels and the volume and all that stuff. So that's super cool that they actually bothered to include that. So, <clears throat> shifting the camera back here. Let me fold this down. Oh, not that far. There we go. So you can fold it all the way in like that, but again, you're not supposed to do it like that. It's supposed to just sit that way. Okay. Now moving on to the back, as you saw, it does have some luggage, which sadly has nothing on the inside, but you can use your imagination to store something in there. And of course, you do have a couple different stickers on it. Uh, got, what is that? De De is that Denmark? Um, which it would be, which I think that is. Yeah, that's Denmark. Or it's pronounced Danmark? No, it's Denmark. Okay, so I believe that's where Lego was originated, right? It was in Denmark. So that's super cool that they actually bothered to include that there. Of course, you have Italy. I believe this is Poland. Um, this is, I believe, uh, France, right? And then I have no idea what these two are. But maybe someone in the comments can tell me what those are. And on this side, you also have a Sweden and some sort of cross one there. And then the other side, nothing. <laughs> Now on the back we do have more sticker details, and of course we have the, what is that, Neova 500, which I believe is probably Fiat and I'm guessing Italian, because I believe this is an Italian car, and we have Tofo 1965 on there, <coughs> and then we open up the back, and there we have the engine, which does look pretty sweet, even if mine's has, yeah, it's a bit of a gap there, but, you know. It's it's still 
really cool that they bothered to include the engine. And oh god, there's like some crud in there. Now, ah, well, so oh, and there's the little exhaust back there too. But yeah, very nice little thing. Also, I forgot to mention as well that there are an extra set of seats in the back, which again have the same detailing as the front seats, just of course they're more tucked in the back. But, and this set I believe has pretty much no stickers at all. But before I wrap it up on this car, I do want to talk about its one the one accessory it does come with outside the luggage, and that is this little paint easel with a sort of watercolor paint artwork of the actual Fiat 500, the real thing, which I think is really cool. Um, and you do get, of course, a little paint, right, um, palette, and you do get a little paintbrush here, which is one of the few times I've actually glued a Lego piece onto a set, because it is just supposed to sit there loose, but I just, I just glue it in there, so that way it doesn't, you know, flop around. <coughs> Excuse me. And it does have an adjustable rear leg. So that is super, super cute. And all in all, I love this little thing. It's small, but it's effective, right? So with that being said, now let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, so my apologies. Um, I know that you're not gonna see this in post, but I accidentally pressed the wrong button on the camera, so, uh, oops. But that being said, uh, something else I probably should have mentioned at the beginning before we continue is that, uh, yeah, I am going through a bit of a uh, illness at the moment, so I, my apologies for my disgusting coughing. I know, uh, it, it's nasty, but, you know, just, just, just gonna let you guys know that now, so my apologies for that, because I know that's disgusting. But anyways, here we have the Volkswagen Beetle. Yes, one of the most iconic, right, um, cars of its time, and even into today, I believe it's still one of the most iconic, right, classic cars. Plus, I mean, this was Bumblebee from the original Transformers, right? Uh, was a Volkswagen Beetle, so really cool to have them. Really missed opportunity to uh, have a yellow one, because I don't believe this one had a yellow variant. Shame. But hey, at least you do have the blue one um, stock. So let's check it out. So putting it on the turntable once again. Hopefully this one will fit properly. Also, I really should spin it this way so that way I can actually see the controls of this darn thing. So you guys can see. Oh shoot, why is it doing that? That's what I wanted to do. Okay, hold on. Let me press this one. There we go. That way you guys can see all the awesome detail on this particular car. So very nice, clean blue um, with all the little accents and details on it. Now I know for, a f so, and I can say for a fact that this one definitely had alternate bumper stickers on it. Can't remember what they were exactly, but then again, I don't think it really matters, does it? So, let me turn the table out of the way. Let's get a better look at the Volkswagen Beetle's details. Starting at the front with the beautiful right uh, front headlights. Uh, of course, you do get the front bumper sticker with California P51 AK1. And of course, you have the Volkswagen logo at the top, which thankfully is in fact a print, not a sticker. So, thank God. Um, of course, you do have the adjustable little ears, um, which I know they're not ears, they're, they're you know, rear view mirrors. But still, very, very nice looking. And if we open up the front, which is a bit tricky to do, considering sometimes it wants to pop apart. But then again, mine's relatively old, you know, and clearly dusty. Um, you can see the little, right, gas pump there. And then, once again, you do have a functional spare tire in here which uh, uh, sadly isn't the exact same tires as the actual car uses. But then again, it should be pretty simple to just swap out the rubber tire and then just pop in the proper wheel um, tire. <clears throat> so that is pretty sweet. Now moving on to the side of the car. 
Of course, you do have the opening doors. Ooh, uh, ooh God. It is really cr cr crusty in here. Oof. Again, my apologies. This, this thing... Oh, boy. Like I said, it's just been sitting on a shelf for so long that... Oh, God. And there's all kinds of, like, dog hair in here. Oh, it's nasty. But you can see the little seats there, which are in flat... Flat? Fact! Um, reclinable. And foldable. So you can fold it all the way down or all the way back. As far back as the little side of the door there. And it does have a steering wheel, though I'm not going to try to steer it. Uh, and it does have a little speedometer on there that you really can't really see. And also, I like how they use a telephone piece for the actual door handle on the inside. It's a small thing, but it's a neat little detail nonetheless. So let's go to the other side now. That we can open up the other one. And we can actually see right the little clutch. And there is a stick shift in there, even though it's literally just an antenna piece. And sadly, I can't really show these very well because it's very dark in there. Uh, but take my word for it, they are in there. So that is a super neat detail. And then, of course, on the top as well, we do have a surfboard very long surfboard with the little fin on the bottom so that's really cool to have and then of course you do have a wine cooler or just a little cooler <coughs> which excuse me does in fact pop open you can see we have some ice pieces in there got a couple drinks and a little soda with a printed top so that's a really nice detail as well and it actually does have a bit of rubber on the side, so that way everything stays nice and in place. So, very, very nice. And then, of course, on the back, if we open this up, we can see the mini little engine in there. Which, yes, that does use a real rubber band in there for the little engine. Super cool. Sad it doesn't work, but, you know, it is there. And, of course, you do have the little exhaust, um, little exhaust pipes out the back. So that is very, very nice. But once again, that kind of wraps it up for the um, Volkswagen Beetle. And it's really, and this set's really cool as well uh, because of the fact that this is, I believe, the first ever Volkswagen like collaboration Lego's ever done is the Beetle. And I can see why they started with this one because this one is. You know, as I said, one of, if not the most iconic, like, classic car there is to date. And, you know, it's it, it's interesting they went for a blue, because I don't remember Volkswagens ever really being shown off being blue. I remember them being, of course, like, yellow, and I'm pretty sure they were red ones. But other than that, I don't remember them being blue. But, hey, you know, it works. So, jump cut again to the next one. All right, and next we have the Lego Caterham 7 620R. So yes, this is in fact a old style race car. And it's very interesting in the fact that once again, I've never really seen a race car that looks quite like this. Um, let alone one that was, you think this would be creator expert, but no, this was an ideas set. If you guys don't know how Ideas works, basically Lego Ideas is where Lego fans, right, can submit sets to be made into official, you know, production Lego sets if they get enough backers and support, in our case, maybe. And we've gotten some really cool sets out of Ideas, but this is definitely one of the best idea sets, or at least one of the better ones to date, right? So, especially for someone like me. So... Taking a better look at the Caterham 7, I'm going to start here at the front with the very nice and kind of dirty uh, real rubber wheels. Of course, we have the Caterham 7 logo on the front. Now, this is another set where I actually had to use some glue on it because the front section was so loose on mine, it would constantly pop off. So, once again, I did have to use a bit of, you know, uh, Gorilla Glue to get that stuck on there so that way it doesn't flop off. But... Then, of course, you do have the headlights, which do look very clean, very nice. 
And of course, you do have the seven logo there. And all of these, thankfully, they all of everything that looks like a sticker, thank God, they're prints. <laughs> they're all prints, right? So that is a godsend. And of course, you do have the little like mud guards here, little flaps over the wheels, which is very nice. And if we open up this section, we can see the massive detailed engine, which is super, super cool to see this. Uh, and yes, it is using a whip as like a fuel tube uh, or like a little tubing inside. And yes, that is Lego pneumatic tubing they're using for more of the internal details. And I love the fact that the little like exhausts here on the side, I believe these are supposed to be exhausts, are actual Lego revolvers that they're using for those little parts of the engine. Super cool detail uh, to include. And of course, we do have the 7620R logo on there. Just very, very nice. And I believe this part is in fact, oh God, wait, that piece is cracked? How did it crack? Uh, I think I have another gray piece like that, so I might be able to replace that. But that's a shame that one of the pieces cracked on the inside. Probably because of uh, old age, probably just cracked. But then, of course, you do have the Caterham logo on the side of the little stripe. And then if we turn to the back, you can see the internal details. And the seats, I believe, are reclinable. Yep, yep, they're reclinable. So you can fold them all the way forward. And all the way back, though I don't advise that because I think I just broke the seat. So hold on, let me see if I can fix that. Yeah, I just broke the seat. Oh god. Oh no. Okay. Well, thankfully it does look like it just very easily... <coughs> excuse me. Goes back together. So you just kind of pop that like that, right? Yeah, it just goes like that. And that goes like that, right? I believe this... Oh, this seat's also broken as well. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, thankfully they're back in now. And on the uh, driver's side, those little gray arms, I don't know if you can see that, Lego droid arms. Yeah, those are the pedals for the for the car, which, again, is very nice. Though, the steering wheel kind of stinks because there are little speedometers and stuff on the inside. But you can't really see them because the steering wheel's in the way. Uh, you do have the little clutch right system on the inside there. Very nice details. And of course, you do have three rear view mirrors, which I have no idea why you have three of them, but you do. And on the back, you can see the Caterham 7 logo. And of course, you do have the little fuel pipe or the little, the little gas cap. That's, the, that's what's called gas cap right there. And if you open up the back section, you actually get a few little jacks. So that way you could actually put the car on jacks if you wanted to like work on the car or pretend that you're working on it. I think that that's a really cool little detail. Though again, it is kind of tricky to store them in there. And once again, the back is a bit dusty, but yeah. And it sucks because like I just recently dusted it and it's like it's, nothing ever happened to it, but yeah. Um, I'm spinning around now to the other side. You can see the big exhaust right there, which, uh, spoiler alert, does not in fact connect into the car in any way. It just kind of sits there. Um, but as you can see, it comes all the way out and then just, you know, releases all the internal pressure out on that side. Sucks that it's not dual mounted, but I guess I can understand why they didn't do that on the actual vehicle. But still, this one is just just so random. And once again, I got this one as pretty much an impulse buy at a Lego store, which you're going to hear that a lot for how I obtain these. Uh, the Now, I believe the previous car that I showed, um, now, I probably shouldn't mention this as well with the Fiat. The Fiat, I got as a surprise present from my parents, right? Um, and then the, so, and that's, and the same goes for the Volkswagen Beetle, got that as a surprise present, and this one I bought at a Lego store, um, yeah, so, very, very cool one, <laughs> indeed, so, once again, jump cut again to the next vehicle.
All right, James Bond fans rejoice because next up we're taking a look at the iconic agent's uh, famous car from the right, the at least the more you know older James Bond films, the Aston Martin DB5. Check out how cool this is. Yeah, so this one was kind of random when it released, as I believe it was the anniversary of the James Bond series when this came out. And I just had to get it because although I'm not a huge fan of James Bond, uh, it was still super cool to see that they actually made his iconic vehicle in Lego. So that's super cool. Um, and just like the the cars in the, the car in the films, this thing is packed to the brim with secrets uh, and references right to the James Bond films. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I'm sure any James Bond fan will recognize them immediately. So, taking a look at the car um, on the turntable here, you guys can see the very nice details on it. Uh, and I believe, okay, that's a bit fast. Can we slow that down? No? Okay. <laughs> well, um, still, such a nice thing. And... You know, like I said, it's just a very long car. It's not very girthy, but it is, you know, oh, god dang it, come on. Okay, there we go. Very, very nice, though, um, for what it is. So, once again, starting at the front, we do have the detail prints for the grill, and we do have the Aston Martin logo right at the top, because this is, of course, officially licensed by Aston Martin. And if we look... At the front here, you can see it does have optional, um, once again, it does have optional front plates. And these are very, very cool. So the first one you saw was the BMT 216A. This one is Lou 6789. And it is kind of tricky to turn them because it does have a bit of a click in the back. Uh, so that way it right locks into place. Then we have JB007, obviously referencing James Bond. Right, Agent 007. Then, of course, we have the 4711 EA62. And then we go back to the BMT 2016A. Or, <coughs> 216A. Now, sadly, on the back, it does have the exact same license plates, but it's still really cool that you can really disguise yourself as you're, you know, bolting down the road, so that's super cool. And, of course, on the front, uh, you do have the opening top. So you can see the detailed engine block. And, once again, it is using some exhaust pipes here. Um, which And these exhaust pipes, just like the Volkswagen Beetle, not Volkswagen Beetle, the Caterham um, 7 uh, uses... Lego uh, revolver pieces for the exhaust pipes. So super, super cool detail, once again. And it just folds down very nicely and very discreetly. And then on the side here, you can see the opening doors. And we do have the little radio here, which if you flip it around, flip it around, we do have a navigation map on the inside. Check out how cool that is. Again, it's very hard to see, but you can see the little, like, map there uh, of, I'm guessing, like, like just, just a map, just in general. Uh, maybe you guys can recognize it from one of the movies. I can't, I couldn't tell you. But it's super cool that the radio doubles as a, like, secret agent, right, um, mapping system. So that's super cool. And then of course you do have the stick shift here, which if you push it forward, or no, you push it backwards, there are, on the front, if you look, uh, there are mini guns that flip out, which, again, is super, super cool. So, see, so what was originally the headlights now are like these mini guns that pop out the front. Super, super neat. And to pull them back, you just simply pull the stick shift forward again. And unfortunately on mine, it is a bit sticky, so I'm going to have to do this manually. But it would rotate the guns back in, in favor of the front lights. Super cool detail, once again. 
And then, of course, for the seats, they are not reclinable, sadly. But you do have plenty of space in there, so you could fit a figure inside if you wanted to, you know, have James Bond or similar characters, right, riding around inside of the um, Aston Martin. So that is pretty neat. Then on the back here, we do have the exhaust pipes, or a case may be, and of course the little bumper stickers, which again are the exact same as on the front bumper. And then if we, I can't remember what button it was, I believe it was this one. Yeah, you twist it up, you get a bulletproof little blockade that comes up, so that way if somebody's trying to shoot out your rear windows, well guess what, they can't now because now you got a bulletproof little block that comes up so that's really cool and of course you just twist it back down again and it hides very nicely back inside the vehicle and if you open up the top you can see right the internal mechanisms or case may be and you do actually get a set of little little pipes here well not little pipes little um mag magnifying glasses or we call them telescopes, yeah, you know, telescope pieces, which I believe there are supposed to be another two that go here. I can't for the life of me remember, but basically what you're supposed to do is that you detach the little side blades off and then you stick the little, little telescopes on there, which I will be showing that here in a bit, and you do get this really cool look on it. So let me show you. So if I take this one, right, and then I pop out the little blade, and then I pop the telescope on, or no, I believe you're supposed to take the whole internal section out, which again is going to be a bit tricky to show, so I might have to pop the whole wheel off. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, there we go. The whole wheel comes out. And then this whole middle section should just come out. But of course, as I say that, it's not going to be easy, is it? Oh, come on. Come on. Get out of there. Okay, got it. So then you take this, pop it in place, pop this on, and then you put on the little shuriken. And once you've done that, now you have the bladed wheels, so that way you can pop people's tires and whatnot as you're driving by, or just damage their cars, which again is a super cool detail that they included. They did not need to include that, but that is super, super neat. So, and like I said, I believe you can do it on all four wheels, you could have that, which is, again, so, so cool um, to include. Now, if we stick this back in here, and then pop that back on there. All right, close the boot. And then this middle section here, you can pull out. And if you watch the top, you got this little roof bit that comes up. And then if you pull it back and then release it one more time, you get the ejector seat. So yes, you have an ejector seat inside. And here's what it looks like. Looks exactly the same as the other seat, except it has a little slot on the bottom. So that way you can peg it onto the inside for the ejector seat mechanism. Which is probably my favorite, considering how discreet it is, but how effective it is uh, for that mechanism. So, so, so cool. And then I think the last, like, secret agent gimmick on this involves this door in particular, where if you open up the little hatch, you do have... 007's little secret phone in here. So, very nice red phone. Uh, it is removable. That is a bit tricky to get out of there. But as you can see, you do have a fully red secret agent phone. <laughs> Which, again, is so freaking cool. <laughs> I know I've said that a lot so far, but this thing is just so cool. How many, like, little secret functions are packed within this thing. Just so cool for 007 uh, James Bond fans. Just so much fan service in here. But really, really cool set regardless. So, now with that, let's move on to something a little bit different. Alright, so now we have the Porsche 911. Which, 
This is a more recent car in my collection and is a very nice one indeed. I actually got this last year as a Christmas present. And once again, I, I should mention for the last car, right, that I got that as a surprise present for my parents. So there you go. But really, really cool little car regardless. Now this one's interesting is this is one of the first cars in this collection that have two different modes which I won't be able to show both because I'm actually going to have to massively take apart the car to change it but you have a Targa and you have the turbo modes. So turbo modes obviously a lot more sporty a lot more racing racing oriented and then this one is the more convertible more casual street oriented vehicle. But very, very nice. And once again, do I even need to say it? It's officially licensed by Porsche. So, very, very nice thing. So taking a look at the front, we can see the Porsche logo right there, along with the turn signal lights and the front headlights. And if we open up the front, you do have plenty of space in there for, of course, the convertible top, which I will show that here in just a second, but very, very cool regardless. So now taking off the top here, because the top is convertible, you just gently pop that off. And of course that bit always stays on there. It's supposed to stay there. And then you take this and there you go. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and then, of course, for the doors, they do, in fact, open with some cool detail on the inside. It's supposed to represent, like, leather or velvet sort of padding on the inside. And then, of course, you do have the steering, which, if you, in fact, turn the steering wheel, watch the front wheels. Yes, it does have working steering. This is one of the first in these model cars to have working steering, which is super, super nice because that's one thing that always was a pain with these cars is that they had steering wheels, but you could never steer the wheels. But now, as a matter of fact, now you can. <laughs> so that's super, super neat. And of course you do have the of course the stick shift here and then you do have the clutch which is in fact right operational so you can move that it won't actually change gear or anything but you can move it around so that is pretty neat and then of course on the back you do have like little convertible section here with all of this translucent pieces for the rear seats and i believe this yeah the front seats are slightly adjustable so that is great. And if we pull both of them back, you should be able to get a better view of the rear seats, which I don't believe have any sort of opposability to them whatsoever. So that's kind of a bummer. And then if we open up the back, which does have the Porsche logo and the Targa logo, you can see the engine block. Uh, which, of course, this is the more street-oriented one, but the turbo would have more pipes and a lot more, you know, busy action going on back here. But for the Targa, it's just a simple little rotary fan, and then whatever this is supposed to be here on the side. It's not much, but it's something, I guess. And then you just pop this down, and then, of course, on the back, you also have the exhaust pipe. And I believe this one also had optional bumper stickers. Uh, but, of course, those are optional um, both for this one and for, of course, the turbo version, which you can also build. So, pretty neat. So, that being said, guys, that's pretty much it to say on this one. Again, not much to say, but still very, very nice car uh, regardless and super happy with how this turned out. So... Once again, let's move on to the next car in the collection. All right, next up we have the Chevy Camaro Z28. I believe this is from the 1960s. So this is, again, one of a, a relatively newer car to the collection, but a really cool take on a classic muscle car. So very, very cool indeed. And 
Oh man, I like I said, I freaking love this thing. It's just, it's so cool. Because I've always loved Chevy Camaros, even more so with like Transformers and whatnot. But man, this thing is freaking sweet. Because I mean, check out the detail on this puppy. I mean, wow. And I mean, wow. This could not have turned out any better. Now, of course, this one does have two optional modes. You have a convertible, you have a convertible mode, and then you have the standard, you know, um, hard top. But very, very cool, um, regardless for how it's relatively small this car is. And of course, one of the top parts is a bit off, but eh. Now taking it off the turntable. Let's take a better look at this puppy. I'm starting with the front, which of course has the iconic red Camaro Z28 sort of um, headlights with a couple cheeky little um, extra headlights just hidden below the front little lip of the car. And of course you have the grill with a Z28 logo right there so you can see that uh and on this car you do actually have alternate headlights you can slap on but that's more so for the convertible mode uh and then of course you have the um cursive camaro logo there and this one also has optional colors you can have so this one's in the stock white and black but you can also have red and black or you can have gray and black so, very neat. And all, and all you need to do is just take all the white pieces off and then just swap those out with the appropriate colors that you want. Now, for me, I'm going to go, I went for the black and white because that's the most right iconic version of this car, let alone it's the one that's pro prominently shown on the box. So, of course, I had to have those colors on it. Um, and then, of course, for the front, you do have the opening front section which sadly it is a bit loose on mine i don't know if others have the same problem but mine is a bit loose like i just open it and it just flops down so that kind of sucks but on the inside you do have a detailed engine which does have 302 what does that say turbo fire on it so this is a turbocharged vehicle very very neat and of course that is a sticker and you also have a caution sticker on the inside now thankfully the camaro is the sticker that is a sticker i've got that's not a print so everything that looks like a print potentially that is a sticker so sticker sticker stickers on the inside a uh, sticker for the z28 on the side along with the little turning the turn light uh camaro sticker on the side there and once again you do have opening doors which are very very large and they do have very nice velvety padding on the inside. Not actual velvet, but of course what's supposed to be like velvet padding. And I believe the top can be popped off. Yes, it can. Just very, very carefully pop that off. Oh, and I forgot to mention as well on the inside, you do have a rear view mirror. And you even have little fuzzy dice in there. That's super cool. <laughs> it's a small detail, you really gotta appreciate also on the inside, you do have the seats, which are reclinable completely. Fold them all the way forward, all the way back. And then on the back here, you do have a little magazine on the rear seats, which is super cute. And it says, Hot Team Magazine, Hot Rod. I believe that is a reference to an old Lego theme. Uh, I believe it was Lego Racers, I believe is what that's a reference to. So, very, very cool that they referenced a part of their history from around that time period, right, that this car was released in. So, very neat. And of course, you do have the radio on the inside, which is, in fact, a sticker. And then you have the dashboard, which is also a sticker. And once again, it does have working steering. So, if you steer the steering wheel, watch the front wheels. Yep. They do, in fact, steer, which is really, really nice. And I forgot to mention there's also a little five cents inside a little, um, what do you call it, a little box here, <laughs> uh, storage compartment. So that is super neat as well. And then if we flip around to the back, of course, we have the Z28. Yeah, the Chevy uh, 69 on there. 
And I believe this one also had optional bumper stickers. And what I like is that the little side pieces here, these are Lego axes, little Lego axe pieces that make up that back section. Very clever use of an otherwise a part that you wouldn't think would work for a car like this. But of course, then the back trunk has nothing. No spare tires, no nothing. So again, use your imagination for if you want to stuff anything back here. But again, just such a nice car. And again, it's really, just really, really happy with this guy. Um, of course, we got to put the hard top back on, which is very, very easy. You just snap on the little click hinges, and then you just nicely tab everything back together. As I say that, of course, it's not going to go together nicely. But there we go now. So there we have the Chevy Camaro Z28. Again, very, very nice car. And very pleased to have this in my collection. So, and also I really love the, uh, what do you call it, the drum lacquered uh, wheels as well. So that is in fact right real silver paint on there. Well, they're drum lacquered, but still very, very nice uh, that they did all this right for this car. And another detail that I wanted to point out before I move on to the next car is that, of course, the rear view mirrors are made using ice cream scoop pieces or uh, ice pops uh, are used for the rear view uh, mirrors. Again, very clever use of an otherwise pointless part to have on a Lego car of this scale, let alone of this design. So, very, very sweet. But, yep, now let's move on. All right, and next up is a really, really recent one uh, to my collection. This is the Chevrolet Corvette Z28. So, yes, yet another classic car, and this was released under the LEGO Icons series. So, very, very neat um, little car. And, once again, it's just so cool to see them do a Corvette. Uh, as this is one that I've always wanted them to do, but I never knew quite how LEGO would, uh, would achieve the Corvette look. But I can safely say, just off the, just right off the bat, they nailed the look of the Z28. I mean, look at this, look at this sucker. Just beautiful angles, the deep red, you know, which might be a reference to the song Little Red Corvette, which if that's the case, that's a cute little reference in and of itself. And just all in all, this thing is super, super impressive to look at. And man, it's around the same size, if not a bit bigger than the um, Camaro Z28. But still, a really nice one, nonetheless. Alright. So now, taking a look at the front of the Corvette Z28. You can see the beautiful, right, grill details there. With the front headlights, which do use a very interesting technique. Where you have, I believe it's a silver print on these on these pieces, the little red discs, and then these front clear plates um, kind of go over it, making this very unique shape and appearance for the front lights. So, very nice uh, attention to detail there. Of course, on the front, you do have the print of the Corvette logo, uh, the old style Corvette logo. And then, of course, you have the front grill, and of course, the little angled arches. Um, here at the front with this little angled bumper section, which is very, very pretty. Now, of course, opening up the top, which is a bit tricky to do, but <laughs> you can see the detailed interior because, yes, once again, this does have working steering, and uh, you do have a really nice little engine block in here. Some nice drum lacquered silver pieces for the top of the engine, a couple stickers for the Corvette logos, and of course you can see a bit of the steering mechanism, which as you can kind of see there does in fact work. And then you do have the little rotary fan at the front, which sadly can't really be spun, but trust me, it's there. So pop it all back down. Very, very nice indeed. 
Now taking a look on the inside, we can take the back off because just like with the other cars in the series, as of, or at least the more recent models that we're looking at, you have two different modes. So you have the convertible mode, which is now what it's in. And then if we pop that top section I just popped off back on, then we have the hard top look. And what's nice about this one is that you don't have to completely right, take it apart and rebuild it to, to, to achieve right, the different modes, which I'm sad that, that the other cars in the series that we're going to look at don't really do that, so that kind of sucks, but then of course you do have the interior, which does have a couple of pedals down there, those little gray discs are the, the discs are the pedals, and of course you have the speedometer there, you have the radio, uh, you, have this, you have the stick shift, um, R, 1, 3, N, 2, 4, it says right there on the little lines uh, next to the stick shift. The seats are in fact reclinable, so you can recline them all the way forward and then all the way back flush. So that is pretty neat. Then of course the doors open with very nice detail on the inside of them. And if we turn the steering wheel, again, watch the front wheels. So, yeah, working steering once again. Though, unfortunately, the wheels, how they work is that the steering mechanism pushes on the back of the wheels, which is, yes, that is accurate uh, to how it's actually built, but it gets this really weird steering effect, like here. Let me, let me get it onto the front, and by the way, real rubber tires, so that is great. And these, I believe, are prints for the little discs, right, uh, hubcaps. So as you can see, yeah, that, that that looks a bit too too steep of an angle for it to be steering like that. I get what they were going for, but I don't think it quite works. But, okay. You do you, Lego. So then gently bringing it onto the back. There is a hidden button, right? Is it here? Where was it? Oh yeah, it's right here because the t because the back section is actually so flush that there's literally no other way but to push up this little button in the back. And then you can get the rear storage, which as you can see in the back, you do have a couple extra bumper stickers. So right now, stock, we just have these Corvette logo ones, but we also have a California license plate. And I believe that's Michigan. Is that Michigan? Yeah, Michigan. License plate. Which I believe was the actual, right, place of origin where these cars were manufactured. I could be wrong about that, though. But I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. I also like the fact that it references that 1961, I believe, references when this car was made. Or at least the Corvette C7 was made in. So, very, very neat. And again, love the little gimmick where you have the button... And then that pops the top just enough to get it open. Because that's just how flush it is. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get this open. But very, very neat little mechanism, nonetheless. So with that, guys, once again, that pretty much wraps it up for the Corvette C7. But it's still a very, very nice reference to write another classic style car. Uh, let alone a car that pretty much, I, I guess, embodies the 1960s. And, again, I, it's really nice to see this being released in Icons because I was hoping maybe Crater Expert, but no, this is a Icons release. But still, a model car nonetheless, and it's just, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, and I forgot to mention these little side pieces right here. The little red, white, and blue. Yeah, that is a sticker. So I want a few stickers on this set, but again, just so freaking cool. <laughs> oh God. So now let's move on to the next one. All right, guys. So for the next couple uh, models in the collection, we're going to move away from cars and now we're moving into some vans and trucks. In this case, we're going to be starting off with the 2011 <laughs> Volkswagen T1 camper van. Yes. So that's, so yeah, like I said, this set was initially released in 2011. My God, what an old thing this is. But 
Again, I got this as a surprise present from my parents, so very, very cool one. And the same goes for the Corvette, I should have mentioned that as well. Got it as a present from my parents, so very, very cool one. Um, alongside this one as well. So, let's go ahead and put it on the turntable and get a full 360 of this puppy. <sighs> Surprisingly, it does actually sit very nice on the turntable. I did not think it would sit nice, but... As you can see, very, very nice little van for what it is. And yeah, it might not be all that crazy big, but it's still very, very pretty. Especially for this being, I believe, their second collaboration with Volkswagen. Now, actually, I think I might be wrong because the Beetle, I don't think, was the first collaboration with Volkswagen. I'm pretty sure it was this one. And I believe the Volkswagen Beetle was the second. And then there's a third collaboration they did, which we'll take a look at here later in the, in the video. But still. And by later, I mean it's literally the next one we're going to look at. But still. Uh, starting at the front, we do have the angled right arches which do have which are these little plastic tubes and then we do have the Volkswagen logo right there which is in fact a sticker and of course the front windows are a bit dusty but um, of course we do have the H Volkswagen 1962 which I believe 1962 was the year that these were manufactured in real life so very very nice to see that and of course, on the sides, we do have the opening doors, which is, again, really nice to see here. And you do have the steering wheel there, and you do have the little stick shift. And the seats are slightly adjustable. I mean, very slightly. But, you know, and then, of course, you got more sort of dash details in there. You got a couple buttons and switches. And yes, that is, in fact, a clock there used for the speedometer. So you can tell how old this is because they didn't have proper speedometer pieces back then when this was released. Now, taking a look at this side here, we have a couple doors which we can pull open. And yes, those are real cloth curtains. And you have this whole internal section. Now, let's pop off the top because that's gonna make this way easier to see. There we go. Taking a look on the inside, very nice details in here. So of course we have the adjustable seats here so we can recline that back, recline that forward. Same thing with this seat, very slightly. And then of course you do have a foldable table in here, which is gonna be very tricky to show but it does in fact fold out. I'm not gonna bother me doing that because I'm probably gonna break the set, but trust me, it does fold out. Down on the inside, you have a couple shelving, you have a shelving unit there, a couple little shelves and where a case may be, and then you actually have a little t-shirt in there that says, make Lego models not war, obviously referencing the old uh, make peace not war, uh, shirts because once again these were famously known as hippie vans weren't they <laughs> because they were very popular with hippies at the time right so very very cool to see that right and of course on the inside you got some more seat details or a case maybe and I believe the t-shirt can be removed though I'm not gonna bother trying it for at risk of possibly breaking the set but trust me I believe it does come out <laughs> And of course, got a little sink there as well, which also has a little a door in here. Which, if you open that up, there's nothing inside. But you could store like some some like soap or something in there, because I believe they do have soap pieces. And then of course, you have a little pan. You got a little comb in there. Just very small space, but they really did make use of those little right spaces. You also have a lava lamp in the back. Again, very iconic with the with hippies, let alone with the 1960s in general. Um, and actually, I have a lava lamp right there. <laughs> so that's pretty cool uh, as well. Not green like the one in the set, but hey, really cool little lava lamp back there. <laughs> so, we pop the top back on. And if we pull up the top, we have the little uh, convertible, I guess, mode for it. And yes, this is real cloth for the little 
for the internals of that little mechanism. Let's push that down again. Very easy to operate. And again, real rubber tires, which I shouldn't have to mention that because for all of these, they have real rubber tires. But then, of course, you can open the back to get more access to the internals. And, of course, there's all kinds of gook and ick on here. Oh, God, get out of there. Okay. Then we got all that out of there. And then if we open up the rear boot... There is a tiny little engine block in there with all the little tubes and pipes and everything you'd need in there. And there actually has a rubber band for the little belt as well. Very, very neat that they have that there. And of course, you also have the Volkswagen 1962 logo on it. So again, very, very nice little attentions to detail. Closing that back up. And of course, you do have a little exhaust pipe coming out the back, or what's supposed to be an exhaust pipe. And like I said, I don't believe there is a spare tire included with this set. So, not that big a deal, and not that many stickers either. Because I believe you got a sticker right there, and a sticker there, stickers for the bumpers. And I think that's pretty much it uh, in terms of stickers. Not much, but just enough for the little, for the little details. So, that's going to wrap it up for the Volkswagen T1 camper van. So very, very cool. And now let's move on to its later successor.